the one and only vice presidential debate in the books. Kamala Harris making history, the first black woman and South Asian American on a major party ticket, sparring with Vice President Mike Pence, whose job she's trying to win. This showdown coming as a COVID outbreak shadows the president and the West Wing. So how did they do? For the very latest, we go now to ABC's Mary Bruce. Mary? Juju, despite the very unusual setting here in the room, the two candidates up on stage separated by that plexiglass, all of us here in our masks, what struck me most about this debate was how it really felt like a normal traditional debate. After last week's disastrous, very raucous debate between the president and Joe Biden, the bar for civility was low. So tonight when we saw a lot of pleasantries, not a lot of interrupting at all, and really a conversation about policy, it did seem rather remarkable. What also felt like a normal debate was how much they refused to simply answer a lot of questions. We saw a lot of reverting back to traditional talking points, often a lot of yes or no questions left unanswered. Two notable dodges that stick out to me, Kamala Harris refusing to give a straight answer on packing the court, Mike Pence still not saying what their plan is for health care. Juju. Thank you, Mary. Now more on tonight's consequential debate with many questions artfully dodged. The most pointed question on the growing controversy over that White House event linked to a COVID outbreak. Vice President Pence, you were in the front row in a Rose Garden event 11 days ago, what seems to have been a super spreader event for senior administration and congressional officials. No social distancing, few masks, and now a cluster of coronavirus cases among those who were there. How can you expect Americans to follow the administration's safety guidelines to protect themselves from COVID when you at the White House have not been doing so? Well, the American people have demonstrated over the last eight months, that when given the facts, they're willing to put the health of their families and their neighbors and people they don't even know first. After the president spent the weekend hospitalized with COVID-19, his vice president, Mike Pence, tasked tonight with answering for the administration's pandemic response. And for the 34 people connected to the White House outbreak, who've also tested positive in the past week. Rose Garden event. There's been a great deal of speculation about it. An outdoor event, which yeah. All of our scientists regularly and routinely advise. The difference here is President Trump and I trust the American people to make choices in the best interest of their health. The American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. And here are the facts. 210,000 dead people in our country in just the last several months. Over 7 million people who have contracted this disease. One in five businesses closed. We're looking at frontline workers who have been treated like sacrificial workers. We are looking at over 30 million people who in the last several months had to file for unemployment. Senator Kamala Harris pressing Pence on his leadership of the White House's coronavirus task force. The president said it was a hoax. They minimize the seriousness of it. Whatever the vice president is claiming the administration has done, clearly it hasn't worked. From the very first day, President Donald Trump has put the health of America first. Before there were more than five cases in the United States, all people who had returned from China. President Donald Trump did what no other American president had ever done. And that was he suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. The pandemic front and center, with the senator's campaign even requesting plexiglass on the debate stage. This contest, more civil and substantive than last week's first presidential debate, USA Today Washington Bureau Chief Susan Page tasked with keeping this debate on the rails. Americans also deserve a discussion that is civil. I, and I, I want to add, if, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. In. Senator Harris, you're, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. With that jab, the vice president attacking the Biden-Harris economic plan. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want to raise taxes. They want to bury our economy under a $2 trillion Green New Deal, which you were one of the original co-sponsors of in the United States Senate. They want to abolish fossil fuels and ban fracking, which would cost hundreds of thousands of American jobs all across the heartland. I think this is supposed to be a debate based on fact and truth. And the truth and the fact is, Joe Biden has been very clear. He will not raise taxes on anybody who makes less than $400,000 a year. He said he's repeal the Trump tax cut. You have Donald Trump, who has reigned over 
a recession that is being compared to the Great Depression. With the Republican-led Senate planning to begin confirmation hearings on Judge Amy Coney Barrett's nomination next week, the future of the Supreme Court, a pressing topic for many Americans. You and Joe Biden going to pack the court if Judge Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed? Your party is actually openly advocating adding seats to the Supreme Court, which has had nine seats for 150 years, if you don't get your way. This is a classic case of if you can't win by the rules, you're going to change the rules. Now, you've refused to answer the question. Joe Biden has refused to answer the question. But Vice President Pence never answered the question about the millions of Americans with coverage under the Affordable Care Act in a second Trump term. How would your administration protect Americans with pre-existing conditions to have access to affordable insurance if the Affordable Care Act is struck down? Well, uh, thank you, Susan. Uh, but let me just say, addressing your very first question, I, I couldn't be more proud to serve as vice president to a president who stands without apology for the sanctity of human life. If you have a pre-existing condition, heart disease, diabetes, breast cancer, they're coming for you. If you love someone who has a pre-existing condition, thank you. Thank they're you, Senator coming Harris. for you. As a biracial former prosecutor, Senator Harris addressing the racial injustice seen throughout the country. Bad cops are bad for good cops. We need reform of our policing in America and our criminal justice system, which is why Joe and I will immediately ban chokeholds and carotid holes. George Floyd would be alive today if we did that. We will require a national registry for police officers who break the law. But Harris has passed as a prosecutor, something the vice president tried to use against her. I really need to make this point. When you were, when you were DA in San Francisco, when you left office, African Americans were 19 times more likely to be prosecuted for minor drug offenses than whites and Hispanics. When you were Attorney General you. of California, you, you increased the, purport, the disproportionate incarceration of Thank blacks you. in California. Yeah. You did nothing on criminal yeah. justice reform in California. You didn't lift a That's, finger to you, pass Mr. the first step back on Capitol Hill. I mean, the reality is your record speaks you, for Vice itself. President. ABC News political director Rick Klein fact-checking some of the biggest moments from tonight's debate. Vice President Pence claimed that President Trump enacted a total ban on travel from China early in the pandemic. While there was a ban announced, it actually had some significant loopholes. American citizens, health care workers, and a whole lot of others, including green card holders, were able to travel freely from China. And it should be noted, by that point, there was a lot of COVID-19 already beginning to spread inside the United States and Europe. Senator Harris warned that if the Trump-Pence ticket is elected, it will mean those with pre-existing conditions will lose their health coverage. While President Trump has made clear that he does not want that to happen, he does not currently have a health care plan that does otherwise. And in fact, his administration is in the Supreme Court to try to throw out all of Obamacare, which includes protections for those with pre-existing conditions. One interesting note about this debate were the number of questions not answered by the candidates. There were a whole lot of evasions and, and, and pure decisions not to answer. Uh, Mike Pence didn't want to say what he'd like to see happen in states if Roe v. Wade was overturned in terms of abortion rights. Uh, Kamala Harris didn't want to talk at all uh, about whether the administration under, under Joe Biden would look to expand the number of seats on the Supreme Court. Next week's second presidential debate is still up in the air, dependent on Donald Trump's health. With less than a month until Election Day, Joe Biden is consistently up several points over President Trump in key battleground states, with a fundraising war chest that continues to trump the president. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.